While some pollsters were way off this election cycle, some nailed it and have historically called it correctly well before Election Day. One of them is Scott Rasmussen, president of RMG Research, pollster and analyst. Scott, great to see you. You and I have been discussing this for a long time. Trump dominated in battleground states where it does count. You caught it just like you did back in 2016. What were some of the mitigating factors this time around? Well, look, the reality, and, and I got to push back a little bit, the polling averages were right on the money this time. Uh, Real Clear Politics showed it as a pure toss-up on the popular vote. All the pollsters nailed the same seven swing states. Um, and what we ended up seeing, and the reason those swing states were so important, is that the economy is still a driving issue. Um, on those seven states, people were more pessimistic about their income than voters in other parts of the country. And ultimately, that is the driving factor. Now, you mentioned Arizona and a ballot initiative on, on immigration. Clearly, in Arizona, a border state where it's a big issue, that helped Trump drive to a larger victory there as well. You talked about the economy. Is that both for Republicans and Democrats as the biggest issue driving them to the polls? It is. It is absolutely the biggest issue, but it's more significant to Republicans. And when you talk about this, the number two issue for Republicans, it's immigration. For Democrats, it was abortion. Did you find those who voted for Trump did so enthusiastically and those who perhaps voted for Harris did so as an anti-Trump vote? You know, there's uh, some of each for both candidates, but by and large, Trump supporters were more likely to tell us they were voting for their candidate rather than against the other. And uh, so I think that gets, you know, gives you a good sense. A lot of the Harris support simply came from people who said, I can't have another four years of Donald Trump. Scott, Republicans took a historic lead in early voting. The first time registered Republicans outvoted registered Democrats since at least 2008. Talk about the significance of this. You know, when you when you talk about the historic lead, we got to remember how new this whole idea of all this early voting is. Um, it is something that has not been a part of our culture until the last couple of decades. And it really accelerated during the pandemic. Uh, so four years ago, Republicans waited till election day to vote. And in many states like Pennsylvania, a key swing state, they were so far behind from the mail-in ballots when things started that um, they just couldn't catch up. This year, Republicans thought, well, you know, we still may not like the idea of all this early voting, but we're going to get there. And that proved very, very important. Uh, you know, by the time Election Day actually arrived, Republicans were in a much solider position than they were four years ago. Uh, there's always reasons people who, despite the best of intentions, wake up on Election Day and just don't go vote. You take care of that problem by voting early. Was there this gender gap that pollsters were claiming, or did you find more women voting for Trump than pollsters had us believe? There were there was a huge gender gap, but that's too simplistic. All you know, uh, yeah. married women are more likely to vote Republican. Single women are more likely to vote Democrat. So it's not just um, you know, are you a male or a female? What we have found the single most important important decider in, ter in terms of how you will vote, it's what party do you belong to? Republican women showed up. They did not challenge their partisan alignment and vote for Kamala Harris. They overwhelmingly voted for Donald Trump. And by the way, Democratic men overwhelmingly voted for Harris. So it's the partisan alignment that matters more. And one of the other big things we saw Donald Trump making some inroads, some modest inroads with black voters and some pretty significant inroads with Hispanic voters. Yeah, what did the polling show for both candidates and those voting blocks? Because you just said something that some pollsters say the opposite happened, that the black male vote actually, even though we know that Harris might have won more of it, there was actually a huge turnout for black male voters for Trump as well. Yeah, uh, in our in our uh, exit polling, we found that 15 percent of black voters overall voted for Donald Trump. So that's a pretty significant number. Um, it's growth from what we've seen from Republicans in the past. It was stronger among younger uh, black voters and very significantly among black voters without a college degree. 
You know, this is something you and I have talked about at different points about the importance of the education divide. People with a postgraduate degree overwhelmingly are were for Kamala Harris. People with a bachelor's degree narrowly for Harris. And those without a degree, including black voters without a degree, much more likely to be supportive of Donald Trump. President of RMG Research, pollster and analyst Scott Rasmussen. Great to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jan.